everybody and uh, welcome to a demo class in physiology. I am Dr. Anupama and um, hello and welcome uh, welcome to a demo. I'm Dr. Anupama. I'm the physiology faculty with DAMS, physiology faculty with DAMS for the last 16 years and um, uh, so this is so this is a small demo class in physiology how we conduct our live classes so basically um, this is to give you a taste of what a live class is all about and um, uh, now as as far as the the those of you are still undergrads you know that what is uh, what is most likely for you is the next exam next exam next exam which is going to be held at the end of the final mbbs uh, uh, and end of your final mbbs um though the announcements are not yet official but i can uh, but we can take it for uh, with a certain degree of uh, uh, with some amount of certainty that the next exam will probably start from 2022 so um, as far as um, the physiology demo is concerned, I am going to be discussing, yes, good evening Anne, good evening Sarah. Uh, so I'm going to be discussing um, an important topic with you and that is the cardiac cycle. Now cardiac cycle, a lot of questions have started coming from the cardiac cycle. Um, in fact, in the recent exam, this there was an exam called the INICET, which is a combined exam for all the central institutes. When I say central institutes, AIMS, JIPMER, PGI, NIMHANS, it was a combined exam. And cardiac cycle was something which was uh, asked. And cardiac cycle is sometimes a little difficult concept to understand. So I've taken this opportunity to discuss the cardiac cycle and try and simplify it and try and give you a taste of the kind of questions which come from the cardiac cycle. Good evening Devyani. Uh, welcome to um, a physiology demo class. Yes. Um, we um, in DAMS have face-to-face -face classes also. Hopefully they'll start once we get the necessary permission from the government and we will be having face-to-face -face classes in certain centers not all but the other centers have got we uh, have classes via vsat and now of course uh, from this year onwards we also have live classes on our app uh, so that is something which is a first which only dams has been able to do we have live classes interactive classes Good evening, Anjali. Good evening, Sharon. Uh, you can ask questions and you can ask your doubts. You can ask uh, clarifications from what is being taught. So this is something which is uh, very, very interesting. And of course, you also have a backup of recorded. Whatever sessions that we do, we those are also recorded and put up in a video library. Uh, so um, our USB, of course, in DAMS is the live class because I feel that the nothing can beat the energy of a live class i am we are able to interact with each other whether it's on the app whether it's through video satellite or on a face to face nothing can beat the energy of a live class so um so i'll just uh, good evening satakshi so i'll start off with the cardiac cycle yes it's an interesting topic uh, sometimes a little difficult to understand but we'll try i'll try and make it as simple as possible so firstly what do you understand by the cardiac cycle what is the cardiac cycle now as far as the cardiac cycle is concerned these are a series of events yes these are a series of events both electrical and mechanical electrical and mechanical from the start of one beat to the next from one beat to the next so all the electrical and the mechanical events which occur in the cardiac cycle from one beat to the next are known uh, all the electrical and the mechanical events which occur from one beat to the next is known as a cardiac cycle. So um, uh, now cardiac cycle, if you see the cardiac cycle, it is how much is the normal cardiac cycle time? This is about 0 0.8 seconds. 0 0.8 seconds. How do we know 0 0.8 seconds? Very simple. In one minute, there are 70 beats. So 60 divided by 60 seconds divided by 70 would give you 0 0.8 seconds for one cardiac cycle. So obviously, if the heart rate is more, what will happen to the cardiac cycle time? Cardiac cycle time will decrease. But normal cardiac cycle time at rest is 0 0.8 second. This is the time from one beat to the next. Now the cardiac cycle, if we see the cardiac cycle, it is divided into, it is divided into 
uh, the cardiac cycle is divided. This is 0 0.8 seconds. It is divided into the atrial events. Atrial events. Atrial events are uh, also for 0 0.8 seconds. Atrial events for 0 0.8 seconds. And the ventricular events. Ventricular events are also for 0 0.8 seconds. Yes, and the atrial events, we can divide it into atrial systole and atrial diastole. Atrial systole for 0 0.1 second and atrial systole for 0 0.7 second. So the, there is an atrial cycle and there is a ventricular cycle. So atrial cycle divided into atrial systole and atrial uh, uh, diastole. Systole for 0 0.1 second, diastole for 0 0.7 seconds. When you look at the ventricular events, they will also be divided into a ventricular systole and a ventricular diastole. Ventricular systole for 0 0.3 seconds and ventricular diastole for 0 0.5 seconds. Right? So ventricular events are also for 0 0.8 seconds. Uh, now, ventricular systole is further subdivided into three. And what are these three? Number one is the isovolumetric contraction phase. Number two is what is known as a rapid ejection phase. And number three is known as a slow ejection phase, right? I have shown this as a single ejection phase, but this is divided into rapid and slow ejection phase. Yes. So these are the three uh, divisions of the ventricular systole. Yes. Ventricular diastole is divided into four. That is isovolumetric relaxation yes first rapid filling phase diastasis and second rapid filling phase so this is the division of the ventricular diastole isovolumetric relaxation first rapid filling phase diastasis and second rapid filling phase the important point to understand is the second rapid filling phase coincides with atrial systole. Yes, atrial systole. So remember, atrial systole, so uh, we know uh, when the cardiac impulse travels through the heart, there is a delay of transmission at the AV node. And because of what is known as the nodal delay, the atria contract first. And atrial contraction is responsible for the last part of the ventricular filling. So this second rapid filling phase of the ventricle is due to atrial contraction. So if you can, I don't know if you can see see my hands in the cap on the uh, see my hands. If my upper hand is the atria and the lower hand is the ventricle, so atrial contraction will be responsible for the last part of ventricular filling. Then atria relax and then the ventricles contract. So because of the nodal delay, atria contract ahead of the ventricles. Atria contract ahead of the ventricles. And this atrial contraction is responsible for the last part of the ventricular filling. Have you understood? Last part of it. Sometimes this is also called the atrial kick. Why atrial kick? What is atrial kick? Atrial kick means the atria are literally kicking the blood into the ventricles. So the last part of ventricular filling or the second rapid filling phase is due to atrial systole. Are we clear with that? So you have to make this sort of a correlation, right? That it is the atria, because of the nodal delay, the atria contract ahead of the ventricles, ahead of the ventricles. And uh, atrial contraction coincides with the last part of ventricular diastole or the last part of ventricular filling. So that is responsible, like I said, for what is known as the second rapid filling phase. Second rapid filling phase. Are we clear with that? Yes, Sadakshi, Saurav, yes. Um, so uh, we are, uh, so this is as far as the uh, divisions of the atrial cycle are concerned, right? Divisions of the atrial cycle are concerned. Now, um, let's see what are the heart sounds with the atrial cycle, uh, so, sorry, with the cardiac cycle, right? Heart sounds, so atrial and the ventricular cycles, I've discussed the divisions with you. Now let's see the heart sounds with the cardiac cycle. Now, when I look at the heart sounds with the cardiac cycle, we know that the 
we know that the okay uh sana kosar proto diastole is a term which is not used now it was an older term which was uh, used so i i'll tell you about proto diastole towards the end but i'm not going to discuss it as a part of it is not a part of my discussion like i said because proto diastole is a, a obsolete term now we don't use proto diastole all right now we just have a look at the heart sounds with the cardiac cycle now as far as heart sounds with cardiac cycle are concerned now we know that between the first and the second heart sound is the ventricular systole between the second heart sound and the next first heart sound is ventricular diastole right so if you see this if you see this the um the first heart sound like i said means onset of ventricular systole second heart sound is end of ventricular systole yes this is the end of ventricular systole right end of it so between s1 and s2 is ventricular systole if you can see this here this is the ventricular systole and between s2 and the next s1 is the ventricular diastole yes so between s1 and s2 ventricular systole between first and the second heart sound lub dub and then between the second heart sound and the next first heart sound is going to be the ventricular diastole yes now what is the first heart sound due to first heart sound is due to closure of the atrioventricular valves this is due to closure of the atrioventricular valves yes this is due to closure of the av valves closure of the av valve means now the ventricular filling is complete the uh uh the av valve because the ventricle is filled with blood the ventricular pressure is higher than the atrial pressure so it causes the atrioventricular valve to close mitral valve on the left side tricuspid valve on the right side yes now what is s2 to to s2 is due to closure of the semilunar valves this is due to closure of the semilunar valves right semilunar valves again why this is marks the end of systole between s1 and s2 is going to be the ventricular systole uh now between s2 and the next s1 is ventricular diastole so there are two heart sounds that you are going to hear in ventricular diastole and that is s3 s3 and s4 now s3 is in the first rapid filling phase S3 in third heart sound is in the first rapid filling phase. Why first rapid filling phase? Now as soon as blood goes from the atrium into the ventricles it literally now there is almost uh, 80% of the blood which is moving from or at least 75 to 80% of the blood which is moving in the first rapid filling phase. So as the blood gushes from the atrium into the ventricles it produces what is known as S3. S3 can be normally heard you can hear it in normal individuals with a thin chest wall and it is also heard in conditions of decreased ventricular compliance decreased ventricular compliance what is ventricular compliance uh, see ventricles are compliant chambers when i say compliant the chambers means they tend to expand as they getting filled with blood they expand isn't it it's like when you take a balloon you fill it with water as you're filling the balloon with water it expands isn't it so ventricles are also something like that compliant yes so first heart sound is heard normally normal individuals especially in young adult males thin chest wall you're able to pick up s3 but s3 is like i said what is it due to first rapid filling phase due to the blood rushing from the atrium into the ventricles now somebody was asking me what is diastasis diastasis means now majority of the blood from the atrium into the ventricles has gone in uh, has gone from the atrium into the ventricles so diastasis there is hardly any flow of blood from the atrium into the ventricles diastasis in diastole there is stasis somewhat uh, stasis in the sense most of the blood has already gone into the ventricles in the first rapid filling phase 
So hardly any flow in diastasis, mid diastole, hardly any flow. So diastasis. Second rapid filling phase, atrial contraction, atrial kick. Atria will push the blood into the ventricles. Now, this atrial systole can cause the uh, can cause the fourth heart sound. So S3 in the first rapid filling phase and S4 in the second rapid filling phase or it coincides with atrial systole. But the important point you have to understand is, the important point like I said you have to understand is, S4 is normally, we do not hear S4. S4 is only heard in certain conditions such as decreased ventricular compliance. S3, you may hear it normally in young adult males, but S4 is only heard in conditions of decreased ventricular compliance. One of, of a, a simple condition which is, uh, which is decreased ventricular compliance is left ventricular hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy, isn't it? What is a concentric hypertrophy? Easiest way to understand concentric, concentric hypertrophy is, uh, uh, you know, I was talking about a balloon being filled with blood tends to expand. Supposing I have 10 balloons, one inside the other, and I'm trying to fill this sort of 10, 10 balloons at the same time, they're one inside the other. So obviously the compliance will reduce and that is what happens in left ventricular hypertrophy. Atria contract, push the blood into the ventricles, ventricles do not expand and that causes the fourth heart sound, right? Saurav Kumar, I did not say no flow, I said minimal flow, minimal flow. There is only, it is not no flow please, it is only a minimal flow because majority of the blood has already gone from the atria into the ventricles in the first heart, in the first rapid filling phase. Yes Saurav, I did not say no flow. I said minimal flow. Yes, most of the blood has already gone in. So what happens is the blood which is coming from the superior and inferior vena cava or from the veins now starts going into the ventricles. Yes, so it's a minimal flow, right? Okay, second rapid filling phase responsible for about 20 to 25% of the ventricular filling and S4 may be heard in the second rapid filling phase, like I said, in conditions of decreased ventricular compliance. Right? So again, S1, onset of systole due to closure of atrioventricular valves. S2, closure of the semilunar valves, end of systole. S3, first rapid filling phase. S4, if present. It's not always present. If present, it is in the second rapid filling phase and coincides with atrial systole. So this is the heart sounds with the cardiac cycle. Let's have a look at another thing, and that is the ECG with the cardiac cycle. So we've already covered the heart sounds. I've already made them here. Uh, between S1 and S2, ventricular systole. Between S2 and ne next, S1, ventricular diastole. S3, first rapid filling phase. S4, if present, coincides with atrial systole. Uh, then you have the, um, then you have the ECG with the cardiac cycle. Now ECG, P wave, QRS complex, T wave. Yes, P wave, QRS complex and the T wave. P wave due to atrial depolarization. QRS complex is ventricular depolarization and T wave is ventricular repolarization. Which phase is not represented in the car in the ECG is atrial repolarization. Right? Atrial. This is again a question which has been asked. Which phase has not been represented? Now, um, I always say the easiest way to remember this is electrical activities, electrical activity is followed by contractile activity. Yes, electrical activity is followed by mechanical activity. So uh, ECG is the electrical activity and this is followed by the mechanical. So P wave will be followed by P wave is atrial depolarization. This is followed by atrial systole, right? Atrial depolarization followed by atrial systole. Uh, ventricular depolarization followed by ventricular systole. T wave ventricular repolarization followed by ventricular diastole. So electrical events are followed by mechanical events. Sorry, I just wanted to switch on the lights. 
Okay, so P wave, QRS complex and the T wave. Now, where are, how do I see what are, um, where are these uh, electrical events? Now, I said P wave, atrial depolarization will be followed by atrial systole. This is atrial systole. So P wave will be recorded somewhere here. This is P wave, atrial depolarization followed by atrial systole. Yes. QRS complex. QRS complex. QRS complex. This is Q. This is R. Right. Q, R, S. And this. So you can see this over here. This is Q. I can make this once again. So this is Q, R, S, ventriculus, ventricular depolarization. And just after the peak of R, you have the onset of systole. Yes. T wave. T wave, I told you, is ventricular repolarization. This will be followed by ventricular diastole. Yes. So again, let's see this. P wave, atrial depolarization followed by atrial systole, electrical event followed by mechanical event, QRS complex, QRS is ventricular, uh, ventricular depolarization, yes, then ventricular depolarization followed by ventricular systole and then T wave which is ventricular repolarization followed by ventricular diastole. The points that you have to remember here is P wave followed by atrial systole, Peak of R, peak of R occurs, is followed by the onset of ventricular systole and T wave is followed by ventricular diastole. Okay? So electrical events will be followed by mechanical events. Yes, electrical events will be followed by mechanical events. Right? Now, uh, this is the ECG with the cardiac cycle, ECG with the cardiac cycle. And there was a time, uh, there was an uh, AIMS question where you were given the heart sounds and you would, the heart sounds were not, uh, the heart sounds were not mentioned. You had to identify the heart sounds. ECG was given and uh, the, you had to identify the heart sounds, right? So see this S1 is just after the peak of R. This is S1 will be just after the peak of R. Yes, this is where you hear the S1 just after the peak of R wave. T wave, S2 is at the end of, three, end of T. S3 is between T and the next P. And S4, if present, will be in the PR interval. S3 after T and before the next P. S2 at the end of T. So S1 after the peak of R. S2 at the end of T. S3 between T and the next P. And S4, if present, will be in the PR interval, isn't it? Because atrial systole will be in the PR interval. Atrial systole will follow P, right? And S4 coincides with atrial systole. So this is heart sounds and the ECG. And like I said, this has been asked as a question. This was an AIMS question. It was a diagrammatic question, which has just been asked about a couple of years back. So this is ECG with the cardiac cycle. So we've done two things. We've done heart sounds with cardiac cycle. We've done ECG with cardiac cycle. Take it. Let's have a look at the left ventricular pressure change and left ventricular volume change with the cardiac cycle. All right. Saurav Kumar says, isovolumetric contraction or ejection is mechanical event. Are right. Contraction beta. Contraction the mechanical one. Huh? Heart is physically contracting. So the mechanical event was electrical can say Electrical is the depolarization. Have you understood? What is ECG? ECG ki definition kya hai? ECG is the graphical representation of all the electrical changes which occur in the heart from one beat to the next. Isn't it? It's the electrical changes. So electrical changes are followed by the mechanical changes. Isn't it? So P wave is atrial depolarization and that is followed by atrial systole. Systole is mechanical event. Systole and diastole are mechanical events. Contraction, relaxation. Contraction, these are mechanical events. Electrical activities, depolarization, repolarization. Okay, sort of. 
isovolumetric contraction, ejection, these are all mechanical events. They are a part of systole. Systole mechanical hai, diastole mechanical hai. Depolarization, repolarization, electrical hai. Theek hai? Sort of, okay? Alright, so let's see what is left ventricular pressure change and volume change with the cardiac cycle. Left ventricular pressure change and volume change with the cardiac cycle. Uh, uh, now the left ventricular pressure change, left ventricular pressure change, the left ventricular pressure is varies between 120 by 0. Left ventricular pressure is 120 by 0. Now what do I mean by 1? That means systolic pressure is 120 and diastolic pressure is 0. Dhyan dijiye, again basics bahut important hai. So this is sort of has just raised a very basic kind of question. So it's very important to be absolutely clear about your basics. So when I say that the LV pressure is 120 by 0, systolic pressure is 120. What is systolic pressure? What is the definition of systolic pressure? Maximum pressure during systole. What is the different what is the definition of diastolic pressure? This is the minimum pressure during diastole. So when I say LV pressure is 120 by 0, this means the maximum pressure that the LV touches during systole or LV reaches during systole is 120 and zero ka matlab hai that during diastole the minimum pressure in the LV is zero. Is that okay? So remember the basics. What is the definition of systolic pressure? What is the definition of diastolic pressure? Okay. So LV pressure and LV volume. So LV pressure maximum pressure is 120 minimum pressure is zero. What about the LV volume? LV volume varies between a maximum volume of 120 and minimum volume of 50. 120 volume is called, 120 ml is called end diastolic volume. That is the maximum volume of the left ventricle is at the end of diastole. Make sense? After all, diastole kya hai? What is diastole? Period of filling. At the end of diastole, the LV volume is 120. End systolic volume is 50. That, what is systolic? Systolic is when the heart contracts. Blood from the ventricles will move into the respective arteries. Yes. So that means the end systolic volume will be the minimum volume, which is 50. Diastole is a period of filling. End diastolic volume will be the maximum volume, 120. End systolic volume will be the minimum volume, which is 50. Now let us try and see what happens to the LV pressure and volume changes. These are completely mechanical changes now, right? Now let's see LV pressure at LV volume at the end of diastole is 120 and the LV pressure at the end of diastole is between 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, right? I'm going to take it as 5, generally between 5 to 10, right? Diastole is a period of filling, ventricles are filled with blood, volume is 120 and the pressure is at 5 millimeters of mercury. Now, if you are aware that the atrial and ventricular pressures, atria are low pressure zones, ventricles are high pressure, isn't it? Atria, after what is the function of the atria? Atria just have to push the blood into the ventricle. Ventricles have to push the blood into the systemic and the pulmonary circulations, right? So atria are low pressure zones. So at a pressure when the LV pressure is at 5, so if I just make the left side of heart here, yes, this is the left atrium, left ventricle, as soon as the LV pressure becomes higher than the LA pressure. At 5, this is going to happen. The moment LV pressure is at 5, it is higher than the LA pressure. It literally causes the mitral valve to close. So this is the point where the mitral valve closes. So I'm going to write this as a simple C, small. This is a C, that means closes. Mitral valve closes and that is what is giving rise to the first heart sound. I told you closure of AV valve and that means onset of systole. Mitral valve is closed, 
aortic valve is also closed left ventricle is a closed chamber there is a sharp rise in pressure from 5 to 80 with no change in volume with no change in volume this is called the isovolumetric contraction phase volume remains at 120 this is what is known as the isovolumetric contraction phase which is the first phase of ventricular systole Left aortic valve is closed, mitral valve is closed, left ventricle is a closed chamber, sharp rise in pressure from 5 to 80 with no change in volume. This is known as isovolumetric contraction phase. Mm -hmm. Isovolumetric, no change in volume and it is contracting. So a massive rise in pressure. As soon as the LV pressure exceeds the aortic pressure, aortic pressure remember is between 120 and 80. Aortic pressure is at 80. As soon as it exceeds the aortic pressure, it pushes this valve open. It pushes the aortic valve open. So at this point, as soon as the LV pressure exceeds the aortic pressure, the aortic valve will open. I write that. I've written that as an O. But remember, the opening of the aortic valve does not produce any heart sound. Right. So as soon as the aortic valve opens, now blood will go from the from the atrium in from the ventricles into the aorta. It will go from the ventricles into the aorta. Right. And this is your phase of ejection. So what will happen? LV pressure rises to 120. LV volume decreases rapidly decreases this is known as the first as the rapid ejection phase as soon as again look at this as soon as the lv pressure exceeds the diastolic pressure in the aorta it forces the aortic valve open the ejection phase starts once the ejection phase starts blood starts moving out of the ventricles into the aorta into the aorta. So what will happen? LV pressure rapidly rises to 120. LV volume rapidly reduces. In this rapid ejection phase, majority of the blood, almost 70% of the ventricular blood has moved into the aorta. Let's see what will happen now. Then this rapid ejection phase is followed by a slow ejection phase. I've just shown you as one phase, but this is going to be followed by a slow ejection phase where the LV, though it is still contracting, its pressure begins to fall. There is now a slower ejection of blood. Uh, there is now a slower ejection of blood into the aorta. So a slow decrease in the LV volume to reach the end diastolic volume of uh, end systolic volume of 50. So you had a rapid ejection phase, rapid rise in LV pressure to 120, rapid decrease in LV volume. Then the slow ejection phase, the LV pressure begins to fall in spite of the fact that the LV is still contracting, the LV pressure begins to fall because most of the uh, uh, left ventricular blood has already gone into the aorta so left ventricle is relatively empty so intraventricular pressure begins to fall now as soon as the LV pressure now remember now the aorta is filled with blood so aorta also shows an increase in pressure so as soon as the LV pressure now becomes lower than the aortic pressure the aortic valve will close. This is the point where the aortic valve closes and I get the second heart sound. That means end of systole. The systole has now come to an end, right? Systole has now come to an end. Aortic valve closes. Mitral valve is already closed. The systole is now at an end, right? So this is second heart sound marks the end of systole. Right. So remember, aortic valve is closed, mitral valve is not yet open. Now that starts the diastole, relaxation, four phases, isovolumetric relaxation, first rapid filling phase, diastasis, second rapid filling phase. Now in the isovolumetric relaxation, there is going to be a sharp fall in pressure to zero with no change in volume with no change in volume. Volume remains at 50. This is the isovolumetric relaxation phase. Now, as soon as the LV pressure reaches zero, 
this pressure is this pressure is lower than the atrial pressure even though atria are low pressure zones but this is going to be lower than the atrial pressure so what will happen now now as soon as this pressure becomes lower than the atrial pressure the mitral valve or the av valves will open and now starts the phase of ventricular filling have you understood please understand what is going to cause an opening of the valve is as soon as the lv pressure is lower than the la pressure la pressure is higher forces the mitral valve to open and as soon as the mitral valve opens now starts the phase of filling now starts the phase of filling so you have a rapid filling phase the first rapid filling phase almost 70 to 75% of filling is happening over here right then you have diastasis which is minimal filling sort of kumar pay attention here right and then the second rapid filling phase yes to reach the end diastolic volume of 120 ml what will happen to the lv pressure lv pressure lv pressure shows a slight increase from 0 to 5 as soon as it reaches 5 remember volume is increasing from volume is increasing from 50 to 120 but the pressure is only increasing from 0 to 5 and as soon as it reaches 5 this pressure is higher than the la pressure and the mitral valve closes next cardiac cycle starts so this is the lv pressure change and the lv volume change see this once again end of diastole LV volume 120, LV pressure 5 higher than the LA pressure. The mitral valve closes, first heart sound, onset of systole. Now, first uh, mitral valve is closed, aortic valve is closed, left ventricle is a closed chamber, sharp rise in sharp rise in pressure with no change in volume, isovolumetric contraction phase. As soon as the LV pressure exceeds the diastolic pressure of the of the aorta the aortic valve will open and now starts the phase of ejection so lv pressure rises to 120 volume decreases rapidly in the slow ejection phase lv pressure begins to fall slower decrease in lv volume as soon as the lv pressure becomes lower than the aortic pressure the aortic valve will close at second heart sound end of systole and then you have diastole First phase of diastole, isovolumetric relaxation, sharp fall in LV pressure with no change in volume. Mm -hmm. Then you have the uh, uh, the first rapid filling phase where rapid increase in LV volume, diastasis, minimal increase in LV volume. Second rapid filling phase, last 20 to 25 percent filling in the second rapid filling phase, which is due to atrial systole. Right? LV volume increases from 50 to 120 and Pressure increases only from 0 to 5 because ventricles are compliant chambers. Compliant chambers. So, sort of, Kumar, you wanted to know where is the aortic pressure curve. So, I'm going to draw the aortic pressure change now in this diagram, right, to make it even more clear. So, I'm splitting it into. Uh, so, let's see. Now, the aorta during diastole, the aortic pressure is, remember, the aortic pressure will vary between. This is the SBP, which is uh, 120, and the DBP, which is 80. So aortic pressure is at 80 in during diastole, but as soon as, at the end of isovolumetric contraction phase, as soon as the LV pressure exceeds the diastolic pressure of the aorta, the aortic valve will open and the phase of ejection starts. LV blood starts going into the aorta. So what will happen to the aortic pressure? Aortic pressure will also rise closely follows the LV pressure change, isn't it? Closely follows the LV pressure change. As the LV is pushing the blood into the aorta, the aortic pressure rises. In the slow ejection phase, LV pressure falls and the aortic pressure will also fall. Why does the aortic pressure fall in the slow ejection phase? Because number one, slower ejection from the left ventricle and number two, the aortic blood moves forward. So the aortic pressure also begins to fall. But at the end of ventricular systole, we find that the LV pressure becomes lower than the aortic pressure. 
LV pressure becomes lower than the aortic pressure and the moment LV pressure becomes lower than the aortic pressure, the aortic valve will close giving rise to the second heart sound, end of ventricular, uh, ventricular systole. So this was the aortic pressure curve but what happens when the, when the aortic valve closes? There is a slight notch that you see. I can show this to you once again. This is when the aortic valve opens. There is a rise in the aortic pressure to 120, fall in the slow ejection phase and where the aortic valve closes, you get what is known as the incisura. Incisura. Incisura is also known as the dichrotic notch in the peripheral arteries. And what does this incisura do to? Let's see this. See, at the end of ventricular systole, LV pressure is lower than the aortic pressure. So the aortic, as soon as the, the LV pressure is lower than the aortic pressure, the aortic pressure will tend to go back into the left ventricle. Because blood, you, remember, you know, moves always from an area of high pressure to low pressure. But as this blood is trying to go back into the left ventricle, the aortic valve is closed. So what happens is this stream of blood will go and hit it goes and hits the closed aortic valve and that is why you get a slight rise in pressure and the trough before the rise is known as incisura. Aortic blood trying to go back into the left ventricle hitting the closed aortic valve produces the incisura. So which valvular condition there will be no incisura? Aortic regurgitation. In aortic regurgitation, incisura will be absent. If aortic valve is incompetent, there is no question of an incisura. This is uh, this is the aortic pressure change with the cardiac cycle. Let's see the JVP pressure, JVP with the cardiac cycle. To complete the cardiac cycle, let's see JVP with the cardiac cycle. Now, as far as JVP with the cardiac cycle is concerned, JVP we see on the right side. The right internal jugular vein reflects all the right atrial pressure changes. Yes. Now there is there are the you see the JVP on the right side because right internal jugular vein, like I said, it will reflect all the right atrial pressure changes. Yes. JVP is better seen. There are multiple positive uh, and multiple negative waves. So there are three positive waves: A, C, V, and two negative waves: X descent, Y descent. Right. Now, what is the A wave of the JVP due to? A wave of the JVP coincides with atrial systole. So A wave of the JVP will be here, atrial systole. So in other words, A wave will be here. What is C wave due to? C wave is due to bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium. Bulging of the closed tricuspid valve into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction phase. When it bulges into the right atrium, right atrium pressure increases, which is seen as a positive wave on the JVP. Then in the ejection phase, you have the X descent. What is the X descent due to? Closed tricuspid valve is pulled downwards. Closed tricuspid valve is pulled downwards during the ejection phase. Then another positive wave, which is the V wave. V wave is due to filling of the atrium, venous filling of the atrium, just before opening of the tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve will open here. Tricuspid valve opens just before the first rapid filling phase. And in the first rapid filling phase, you get what is known as the Y descent. Second rapid filling phase, atrial systole, A wave of JVP. C wave in isovolumetric contraction, bulging of closed tricuspid valves into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction phase. X descent, downward pull of the closed tricuspid valve during ejection phase. V, V wave is due to venous filling of the right atrium just before opening of the tricuspid valve. As soon as the tricuspid valve open, opens, blood goes from the atrium into the ventricles, gives rise to the Y descent. So this is the JVP with the cardiac cycle. Yes. Now, um, normally, so if I'm putting, all, I put all of this in one diagram. Now, what happens is you are generally asked. Now, here we are recording the heart sounds, which is called phonocardiogram, ECG changes, 
aortic pressure changes and the JVP simultaneously. X-axis has got time. We are recording all this simultaneously. We want to know what is going to be the sequence. What is the sequence? Right? That is the most commonly asked question. What is going to be the sequence? What follows what? Both, all four things are being recorded simultaneously. Yes? We've discussed, we've ex tried to explain how does this happen. Now let's try and, uh, now let's try and sort of figure out what is the best way to learn or best way to remember what follows what. And for that, I have a little bit, I have a small little formula for you to remember. And that is P A Q. PAQ. Now, first, if you look at this, number one is the P wave of ECG. P wave of ECG, which is atrial depolarization, is followed by the A wave of JVP, which is due to atrial systole. A wave of JVP is due to atrial systole. Followed by Q wave of ECG. Followed by R wave of ECG. Followed by first heart sound. Isn't it? Peak of R is followed by first heart sound. Yes, so P K P A Q R one, then C wave of J B P. P K P P A Q R one C, then you have the X descent. X descent. Yes. P A Q R one C, then second heart sound. Yes. Then V wave, then the third heart sound, third heart sound coincides with the wide descent. Second heart sound coincides with dichrotic notch. Right? So if you remember this little formula, it will at least help you answer your questions. P A Q R 1 C X descent. 2v3. So if you kind of remember this, this helps you understand, it helps you answer your questions. What follows what? PAQR1, C, X descent, 2v3. Have you understood? Right? So this is what, what is following what? And I will try and give you one question which has been asked this year's, in this year's INICET exam. It says, if number one is first heart sound, A wave, ventricular filling, T wave. Which of the following is a correct sequence? I can write that formula here. P A Q R 1 C X descent 2 V 3. Isn't it? And third heart sound coincides with Y and this is dichrotic notch. This is what I made you write in the previous slide. So let's try and see what is the correct sequence of the cardiac cycle after P wave of ECG. P wave of ECG is followed by A wave. Isn't it? A wave. So that means number two. So you have one option which is starting with two. Yes. And then the first heart sound. After A wave, you can see the first heart sound. Then ventricular first heart sound. T wave will be followed by ventricular filling. So my answer here is 2143. All right. So this is as far as what I have for the cardiac cycle, right? Please try and see this once again. Um, try and follow, try and understand the basics here. The basics are that number one, thank you, Paris. Thank you, Paris, for your compliment. The point, the basics you have to understand that all electrical activities will be followed by mechanical activities. Depolarization will be followed by contraction. Repolarization will be followed by relaxation. So once you keep that in mind, what you see, systole and diastole are mechanical activities. ECG is electrical activity. So try and follow, try and remember the cardiac cycle the way I've done. Try and first do the heart sounds with cardiac cycle. Look at the ECG with cardiac cycle. LV pressure change, LV volume change. What is the aortic pressure change? What is the JVP? When these all these four are being recorded simultaneously, what follows what? Like I asked, like I gave you this little formula to remember. If you follow this, if you can just take, uh, if you follow this, you realize this is going to help you answer most of your questions. Had you done this formula to answer the next question, which was asked in the INICET this time, 
it becomes very, very easy to answer this. You would have taken less than 10 seconds to answer this question and you could have concentrated on the more difficult questions. Right. So this is the um, uh, this is the cardiac cycle from my side. And um, I will meet you in the next demo class. Uh, whenever that is scheduled. Yes. Swapnoi, thank you so much. Sitakshi, Paras, Anvesha, Gudlin, Devyani, Saurav. Saurav, I hope uh, the um, cardiac cycle is a little more clear to you. Yes. You have my, uh, you have my email ID. Uh, you have my email ID. So any questions that you may have, you can ask me here. This is the email ID. Yes. And Thank you so much. Thank you for your compliment, Anne Prasad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anvesha. Um, in case you are uh, there, I have a referral code, which is Dr. D-R-A-N-M-E-T-974. In case you are, um, in case you are taking any of the dance courses, you can use this referral code to get a 10% discount. Okay, you want the Daruriana diagram swap my done. Done. I'll do the Daruyan diagram next. Saurav, um, a question, was mechanical activity coupled? Yes, there was a question like this. Is it, uh, that was in, a, uh, what, in a muscle contraction, is it mechanical activity coupled with electrical activity? So the, see, basically, excitation contraction coupling, isn't it? When the actual potential reaches the dihydropyridine receptor, there is a physical interaction between dihydropyridine receptor and the dianodine receptor. Isn't it? So um, the, the best answer in that case is electrical uh, followed by mechanical coupling. Right? Electrical followed by mechanical coupling. Okay? All right. Srijana. Srijan. Uh, okay. Swapnai. Swapnamoy. Sorry. Uh, yes. Daruyana diagram. Next time. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you. And um, I will see you next time. Thank you.